Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about theorems. We've talked about theorems before, but there's some points I need to make about them just so we understand them a little better, and because they're going to be important in explaining the idea of a derived rule. So let's talk about theorems for a little bit. So a logical truth is a sentence that is true no matter how its non-logical vocabulary is interpreted. So a simple one might be, if the sun explodes, then the sun explodes. Yes, this is true no matter what. Whether or not the sun is actually exploding, if the sun explodes, then it explodes. That's true. And um, because it's true in every situation, no matter what, we should be able to derive it without using any premises, and we can. And uh, so officially, then, a theorem is the conclusion of a derivable argument with no premises. So a logical truth, true under any circumstances whatsoever, uh, at least true no matter how we interpret the non-logical vocabulary theorem derivable from no premises and those two coincide so something is a theorem if and only if it's a logical truth you're either both or neither okay that's nice so here are some theorems as we said if p then p is a theorem if p then q then if not q then not p is a theorem uh, if if p then q then p then P. Here's some more. If it's not the case that P, then if P, then Q. If Q, then if P, then Q. If it's not the case that if P, then Q, then P. And if it's not the case that if P, then Q, then not Q. And you'll notice that there's numbers along the side. Those are the numbers the, that they're given in the derivation module in the Logic 2010 program. And we'll see more theorems as we proceed, but not in this video. So theorems have a couple of important properties. One is that they're portable. What do I mean by that? Well, so look at this derivation. It's completely self-contained. Um, we could, And that means we could do it as a subderivation inside of any other derivation, right? We can always write down the first show line because we can always write down show lines whenever we want. The second line, the assumption, is then okay because that just needs the, that show line. The third line is okay because, again, it's a show line. The fourth line is okay because it's just repeating a line we already have. And then the two CDs are fine because they're just referring to lines uh, four and three. So uh, what that means is, is that we could do this, that, this derivation we could put inside of any other derivation and it would still be okay. And, and that's because it doesn't have any premises. And every theorem is like this because every theorem has no premises. What that means is we could take the derivation of whatever theorem we like and put it inside of any other derivation and we would still be fine. So this is important. It means that if you have a theorem, if, if box is a theorem, it can be derived inside of any other derivation because we can repeat the derivation of box inside of that other derivation. And it's more than that. We can say that any instance of box, not just box, is derivable inside of any derivation, but any instance of box is derivable inside of any derivation. So what's an instance? Well, so we have if Q, then if P, then Q. We can say that if R, then S, then if not Z, then if R, then S, is an instance of if Q, then if P, then Q. What's going on here? So we have a sentence circle, if Q, then if P, then Q, and P and Q are the only sentence letters in that initial sentence. So we can pair the P's and the Q's with other sentences. So we could pair P with not Z, and we could pair Q with if R then S. And then we could go through our first sentence, if Q then if P then Q, and replace all the P's and Q's with what they're paired with. So we say wherever there's a Q, we replace it with if R then S, wherever there's a P, we replace it with not z, and what happens? We get that bigger conditional. And what that means is that the bigger conditional, the longer one, is an instance of the shorter conditional. Whenever you can do that replacement, you say, I'm going to uniformly replace all the sentence letters in the first sentence, and I get another sentence. The, the, the later sentence is an instance of the first sentence. Okay, so here's our, our theorem again, our derivation of if q, then of p, then q again. All that matters about this being a derivation is that the P's and Q's match. It doesn't matter that, that we did it, did it with P's and Q's. It matters the matching patterns, right? So it matters that, for example, line 2 is the antecedent of line 1. Whatever the antecedent of line 1 is, as long as it 
and two are this line two are the same, then the derivation works. And the same thing for the rest of it. So it doesn't matter what the lines actually are. We could substitute, we could take out the cues and put in, if we take all the cues out and put them all, replace them all by the same thing, then the derivation we're still gonna we're gonna get a new derivation. The new thing we're gonna get is a derivation. So if we take out all the q's with and replace them with r then s, and we take out all the p's, and we replace them with not z, then what happens? We get a new derivation. Uh, we have a derivation of the new sentence. So we we had if q then if p then q, and the derivation of it, and we took whatever was paired with q and replaced it throughout the derivation with the same thing, and we took p and replaced it, p with the same thing throughout the derivation, and the derivation, and then we get a new derivation, and the justifications are exactly the same, right? Those don't change. So what this means is the following. Suppose that uh, you have a theorem. Suppose that circle is a theorem. You can derive it from no premises. And suppose, furthermore, that box is an instance of circle. So you take out all the sentence letters in circle and replace them. Every occurrence of a sentence letter in circle is replaced by the same sentence. And you get box by doing so. So box is an instance of circle. Well, it, if you then turn around and start with the derivation of circle and you do the, the uniform derivation throughout the whole derivation, then you get a new derivation. So it's not just that you can turn one sentence into another. If the first sentence is a theorem, then when you do the substitutions, you get a, a derivation of the new sentence with the same old justifications. So what this means is that if you have a theorem, every instance of the theorem is also a theorem. And that means this. So if you have, if we show that circle is a theorem, and we know that box is an instance of circle, then we know that box can be derived inside of any derivation. We know the box is a, th is a, is a theorem, and we therefore box can be derived inside of any derivation. So if you show that one sentence is a theorem, then you know that any instance of it can be stuck inside of any derivation you like. And that's important. That's the kicker of this video. But why do we care about that? We're going to learn about that in the next video when I talk about derived rules. So, um, Let's get to that video.